Works Motor here to talk about some of the modifications that I've done. That's going to be a slightly separate video, but this is more about the X pipe and slash cut pipes that I fitted months ago, but finally got a chance to edit. So here we go. I fitted an X pipe and slash cut pipes from Motone months ago. I am probably like April or May. Right now, when you get this video, it's probably gonna be August. So it took me a while to edit, but it took me even longer to plan how I was gonna go about doing this. So this video is gonna be a little bit about that, the planning stages, um, but also talking through the process. And then some channel updates at the end, because there's a lot. But just to get started, the, the idea of using an X-pipe and new exhaust on a, you know, what is it, the Euro 5 model of Triumphs right now, it's, it's kind of crazy, to be honest. So I, somehow I thought of this idea and I thought I could do it by myself without, uh, <laughs> without any help really of any professional without going to a dealer without doing anything like that so that in itself was a little bit a little bit crazy but let's see if it worked so i ended up taking some time to do a few things uh, one i needed the tools right and i'll list i'll probably list in the description all the tools that were needed um i gotta thank Danny Carlson for uh, some other some other tools and some saws that I needed uh, to get through metal uh, to get through the frame in order to do all the things I needed to do. Uh, but you know, first was the tool list. I needed to make sure I had everything. Uh, I needed to also know exactly what I was replacing things with. Right, so the X pipe was going to be put in. All right, instead of um, what, was, what was on there already, then, you know, I needed to make sure that the pipes fit. I also ended up painting the pipes black. So the, the slash cut pipes I got from Motone, those were black. And <clears throat> I had to do some research, so I contacted Motone on the front end and asked them, hey, technically, if I were to gut, right, the catalytic converter and take off the pipes and somehow get that X pipe in there, will your pipes work? And they're like, yeah, if you can somehow do that, it'll, it'll be just fine. And so obviously I took that as a sign of we can do this. And so, you know, that's how the process really began. I got the pipes from Motone, I got the X pipe, and I kind of just went to work. Uh, so the first process when I got the pipes, it was to sand them up, rough them up a little bit, right? So I unwrapped it, roughed them up, uh, needed to uh, scuff them so that when you painted them, you know, the paint would stick. So that was, that was really, that was probably one of the easier parts, right? Uh, and then I didn't have an apparatus to hold them properly. So I had to use my different places in my apartment to really make sure that they were going to, to they were going to be dried and not scuffed even more after the paint was drying. So I was able to do that. That was, that actually went perfectly. The, the, the pipes actually look rather nice. Uh, and then after that was the hard part which is trying to take everything off. Remember where all of the, uh, the screws and all these little pieces went when it was time to, to make sure that I needed to put everything back together. And so, you know, the first part of the process was taking off the, uh, the pipes, right? Loosening the bottom, the bottom half of the bike and then working up. And, you know, this video, it, it's not, 
it's not to the point in which I can give you step-by-step -step details on how to do it. To be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link some videos where uh, some, pro some pros have done this more than just once or twice. I can give you better details on how to do it. I really followed their directions and then from there, I had to MacGyver it my own way. So this is really about what I, all the things I needed to do in order for this to work. So if you've ever fitted a, a X pipe on a street twin, Triumph street twin, it's really the same process, right? You're loosening up the frame, uh, you're, you know, on both sides, right? I had to make sure I loosened it on both sides. I needed to make sure it was, it was stood up properly um, for the, on the paddock stands in order for it to work. If you're doing it on a side stand, it's, it's gonna be hell to try and get that off. Uh, so you basically needed to loosen up everything from the header pipes that you can see there and also the um, take off the, the pipes at the, in the back as well or underneath. Uh, the heat guard as well I had to take out and at this point, you know, right here in this part of the video, I am realizing that I can't shimmy this off because the thing with the Euro 5 bikes the pipes all right are also welded to the catalytic converter so at this point danny carlson came and saved me and i needed to saw this you know what off <laughs> and so i used these different these, these two tools i used these two tools to help me cut through uh, the metal and luckily uh, the metal by those pipes is rather thin so it wasn't too much trouble to try and uh, get the, get this off, but I needed two different saws in order to get the right angle uh, But also not ruin the bike as well So strong enough to cut through the thin thin layers of, of metal and the tubing But also not so strong that it was gonna, you know, it was gonna hurt the bike in some way So I needed something small and accurate the amount of times that I was, you know, I ended up going to Lowe's probably like two or three times in a day it was really ridiculous but all the tools that i bought i mean i definitely know i'll be using them again right and another thing is going back to the tools you do want to make sure that you have the right tools in order to wrench everything back up to spec because even if you did all this great work of fitting things on you still need to be able to make sure that everything is locked in properly so that when you're on the bike, uh, you're not, you know, rattling down the street. You don't want that. So, you know, the cutting was really the part that gave me the most trouble because actually that was one of two parts. One, I had to figure out a way to do this without cut, slashing through like the, <laughs> the side where the clutch is that you're seeing right now. And, but also making sure it, the cut was, uh, was tight enough for me to take the pipes off and wiggle it loose. So at this point I'm realizing uh, I'm not gonna be able to wiggle it loose, which was my, thir my first thought, but I'm actually going to need to uh, cut both pipes as close as I could to the, uh, to the elbow, I'll call it that and then wiggle it loose from there. So I had to make sure I had to cut it through and then loosen the, uh, loosen the frame even more so, so that I could just get that catalytic converter, which is actually pretty relatively heavy and pretty thick and wiggle it loose from there. So that was really the first issue that I had, I was trying to figure out how can I get this off without cutting through the bike or cutting through the frame, the bottom part of the frame that I will need. Uh, and actually there was one thing I did need to do. So if anyone has fit, actually I'm not even sure if this is true, but I assume if you fit a sump guard underneath your Triumph, there are these two pieces at the bottom that kind of poke out. And I had to actually cut one of them on the side um, on the right side of the bike in order to get the catalytic converter out. 
yikes. Um, welding at its finest. <laughs> but I was able to make it happen. The other part that was really challenging uh, was getting the X-pipe in and fitted properly uh, on both ends. So I had some trouble initially making sure I had the right OEM uh, clamps in order to, to fit the pipes, the, what was it, the slash cut pipes, the bedlam pipes in the way that they needed to. And that's what I'm doing there. I'm trying to fit these clamps on. And the first clamps were too thick. I actually got them off Amazon. Um, but then I got the OEM clamps, which definitely helped. And then, you know, once I was able to finagle that, one of the main things, actually I got this from Motown too, the, um, the header clamps. I wanted them all black and wanted it to be chrome. I didn't want it to be any other color, but the clamps and the bolts, I want it to be that gold finish that's on there along with the, the black. So that, that actually looks really nice. But again, this part here was that second challenge where I thought, damn, I've done all this work and now I can't even fit what I need to fit on the bike in order for it to function. And so I was, I was sweating for a couple days trying to make sure that, you know, I didn't just ruin the bike for no reason. But I was able to, to fit those. You needed the right clamps in order for it to, to work and tighten it properly. Luckily, most of the, most of the tools that you're using, it's, it's a, more or less the same tool, just different sizes. So that was the, that was the thing that really <laughs> helped my pocketbook just a little bit. But right here, as, I, as you see, I'm, I'm fitting the bedlam pipes. What's great about those is that it cleans up the backside. It cleans up the back. Um, it doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy to ride it. And you're also, I forget what piece it was, but you're removing some parts of the bike because it's not needed anymore, right? To fit the bigger pipes in the back, it needed an extra um, screw and slot. And you don't really need that for the bedlam pipes. It's so much cleaner on the back. The little rubber bund that's on the catalytic converter You'll hear the other pros talk about this. You have to transfer all those rubber pieces back onto your X pipe. And so that was even a challenge. As we you know, see right here, I needed to use a lot of WD-40 in order to loosen it up. And actually I needed to even cut through some pieces uh, just because it was such a challenge to get some of the rubber pieces off. I needed to loosen it up by uh, by cutting a, a couple slices through the metal in order to, to remove maybe half of a, a piece that was holding some of the rubber parts so that I could reuse them, uh, reuse them for the X pipe. So there was a lot of cutting. Now, one thing I will say, something I learned, you don't wanna ever do any type of metal cutting, wel welding without the proper mask. Um, just came out of COVID, I had a lot of N95s and I was silly enough to think that an N95 would be sufficient enough for the level of metal cutting welding that I was doing. That's not true. Um, I actually got sick <laughs> one day because I was not wearing the proper mask. And I really thought that I was, you know, it was gonna be a quick, cause any, every, all the welding and the cutting that I've done, it's been, I don't know, within 30 seconds, 60 seconds. I mean, it's nothing, it's really quick. The metal pieces are really small. I'm not really, uh, it's not a large project in terms of metal cutting, uh, but still I got sick. I think, I think it was called, I forgot what type of fever it was, but I did not feel good. For about 24 hours, I was feeling a little off, a little lightheaded, um, it was a little scary. <laughs> For the sake of this bike, this project, it was, you know, it was a little scary. But, you know, you live and you learn. And if I were to ever do any type of welding or custom biking again um, with cutting of metal as, the, <laughs> as one of the main parts, uh, I know I'm gonna get a welding mask because that was, that was not okay. <laughs> that was not okay. 
But outside of that, it was it was really an awesome experience. Being able to uh, go through each and every part of the mechanics of the motorcycle outside of the engine, right? Being able to go through that takes a few things apart and loosen them and then come back and tighten everything up to spec and it being a different bike. I can't say I thought about, I can't say I thought that that was gonna happen when I first got it, but I've embarked on this long journey of ideas with the motorcycle from day one till now. It's, it's, it's been an adventure, that's for sure. The bike now, what does it look like? What does it sound like? So the look and the sound, I'm gonna tease for another video. I actually have a video that kind of goes around the entire bike with a drone and talks about every piece of the bike. I'm not sure how the, uh, I'm not sure how the sound is on that video, but we'll, we'll do our best. But I'm gonna save the look, for the looks of the bike for a later video in terms of visuals. But in terms of the way it is and the way it sounds after this, this change, I mean, it's a more powerful bike. What's in addition to this, I think actually I may talk about this later, but I put in a Canon open air filter as well. So that changes the bike in a way. Um, I also did a flash tune, ECU flash tune. So that adjusted the bike for the X pipe, X pipe, excuse me, and the K&N filter. So the bike's a little bit different. The horsepower has increased for sure. It's a little bit more responsive. Um, it's a little, it feels a little faster. Feels a little bit of a stronger, a little bit more of a stronger bike. So, I mean, it's, it's, this was, this was pretty nuts. <laughs> so if you're looking or interested in adapting your Euro 5 bike, Triumph, whatever, Street Twin, Thruxton, Speed Twin, whatever, I'm here to tell you it actually is possible. If you're sick of the catalytic converter and what it does for the bike, you don't actually need it. Uh, you can work your way around it and use different aftermarket parts. Still, it's going to take a little bit more work than just plugging and playing, but it's possible. So more to come with that and in future rides. So riders and learners, thanks for listening. Hope you all have a great day.